सो आई होप आपके सभी के इन ऑल योर इंस्टीट्यूट यू गाइज आर डूइंग दिस करीना लाटरी डॉक्टर राइट सो जस्ट लेट मी नो क्विकली इन द चार्ट सो दैट आई नो द बेस लाइन कि क्या क्या केसेस यू गाइज हैव रिपोर्टेड इन योर रीनल डॉपलर्स एंड वॉट मेथड्स डू यू यूज लाइक डू यू डू फ्रॉम एंटीरियर अप्रोच और डू यू यूज सम काइंड ऑफ अ फ्लैंक अप्रोच सो जस्ट टेल मी चलो द कॉमन केसेज दैट यू गाइज हैव रिपोर्टेड अपार्ट फ्रॉम एन ए डी केसेज ऑफकोर्स विच इज लॉट ऑफ नंबर ऑफ पेशेंट्स are of course nad but apart from that any positive findings any positive diagnosis that you have made till now in the tenure tenure of your residency renal artery stenosis very good theek hai and uh, have you guys done some imaging for this grafts for grafts also have you done any imaging for renal transplant and have you seen the viability the patency of the renal grafts per se if you have a transplant facility or you get requisitions for transplant patients any way uh, it can work right that's a, another very interesting topic so actually that is a complete uh, different topic which is very important the imaging and renal transplant in my uh, when I, i wrote my final year final exams for md i got a long question on that imaging in renal doppler and i actually uh, not renal doppler renal transplant so it is actually a multi modality approach and there was a long 20 mark question so i attempted that question there was an internal choice but i had well read that topic at least at that point of time and um, i just wrote and filled up some 10 pages so yeah uh, so that is a very different topic altogether there is a multi modality approach role of ct angio mr angio and also some role of ultrasound in that uh for the transplant imaging basically so we can take some dedicated topic in the coming months but in today's lecture also i have included some important chota uh, mota here and there sneak peek into renal transplant imaging but main focus will be on renal doppler the technique what kind of approach the patient preparation then important doppler indices and how do you interpret so we'll start from the basics and then we'll see some pathologies also okay so let's go ahead so renal doppler mein in this presentation what is going to be the agenda for the day we are going to cover uh we are going to cover just a second yes sabse pehle we'll see the anatomy so anatomy dekhenge important kidney ka anatomy and more important than that anatomy of the renal vasculature then we will start with the indications then we'll have a look at the techniques of renal doppler applications and the importance of renal doppler and finally we'll conclude this lecture theek hai after having a look at the various pathologies so introduction mein kya kya baatein zaruri hain number 1 uska kya benefits hain it is a very good non invasive tool uh, for uh, providing valuable information about the renal vasculature another always important thing is that it is both anatomy as well as physiology that is anatomy and function because it is a dynamic study so you're not only looking at the kidney morphology the cortical medullary differentiation everything in total that is the anatomy but we are also having a lot of insights into the physiology the vasculature right so that is the dual benefits of this study diagnosis make you important hai you can not only diagnose you can also follow up monitor various renal vascular conditions such as renal artery stenosis renal artery thrombosis or renal vein thrombosis and transplant complications challenges associated of course there are a lot of challenges it's not an easy exam i think any time you get a requisition for renal doppler especially if the patient has not got a good bowel preparation you're always like nahi usko kal bula dena date them you know for tomorrow or day after you're always very reluctant to take renal doppler as why because there are some patient related factors like obesity like bowel gas respiration it takes a lot of cooperation from the patient side he has to suspend respiration only then you can get accurate doctor uh, doppler values which can hinder visualization of the vessels okay after that anatomy mein now this is also very important so ek to hamara main renal artery ho gaya which is arising from the aorta what is the landmark you can have a landmark as a superior mesenteric artery so firstly you see the midline structures firstly you see the celiac trunk then comes the sma and just below the sma there comes the right and then comes the left so right renal artery the right ostia is slightly a few millimeters cranial to the left renal ostia the right a little bit cranial left a little bit caudal and that's how you go about it so you can have sma as the permanent landmark on which you can rely and just beneath the sma the right and then comes the left renal artery 
these are lateral branches of aorta. Abdominal aorta divides into anterior and posterior parts. So, for example, this is my kidney, this is the aorta. So, either se to there is a single main renal artery. But a lot of times, even before entering into the hilum proper, it will start giving off its segmental divisions. So, pele, there will be an anterior division and there will be a posterior division. Anterior division will then divide into four segmental arteries, the apical, the superior, the anterior, the posterior, sometimes the inferior. And then the posterior division will have a single posterior segmental artery. Okay? So there is a main renal artery. Just before entering into the hyla, it gives off an anterior and a posterior branch. Anterior gives four to five segmental and posterior gives a single segmental artery. So, Abhitak, we have seen the main renal artery. Now, let's have a look at the branches. The renal artery branches into segmental arteries. After segmental, it comes interlobar. Chota word pehle aega, interlobar. Then comes arcuate. And then comes the big word for the last. So, just save the complex word for the last. Interlobular. Or vaise bhi are lobe. Right? Lobe is a bigger thing. Lobule is a smaller thing. Node is a big thing. Nodule is a smaller thing. So similarly, lobar, interlobar is going to be the main branch. Interlobular is like a very small branch. After interlobular, finally comes the afferent arteriole. Afferent arteriole. Okay. And that's how. So now I will tell you a very important life-saving trick. Main renal artery, though, you know, it is arising from the aorta. One single, usually single on the right and single on the left. Sometimes you can have accessory or supernumerary arteries. That's fine. Otherwise, there is one motasa, main, dominant, single, one on the right side, one on the left side. The moment it is entering into the renal hilum, at that point, there is an anterior division and a posterior division. So anterior and slightly posterior. Anterior one, up kya hoga? for example, we have the poles of the kidney. We always talk in terms of poles. Calculus hai, ya focal keli tesis hai. In kidney, it is everything about the poles. Upper pole, mid pole and lower pole. Okay? So segmental arteries are like this. Like I told you, anterior one is going to give four segmental arteries. So ye wali jo sari branches hai. This is the level of your segmental. Then, and here you have your renal hilum, you have the sinus fat, basically. In this region, you get the segmental branches. After that, after that, what comes? Next thing comes your medulla. So you come, you got to see these medullary pyramids. So now the vessel, which is coursing along the medullary pyramids, over here, over here, over here, segmental ke baad, which is the next branch? Short term, interlobar. So this is going to be my interlobar. Then arcuate. Arcuate means it is forming an arc. So it is going to form an arc around this pyramid. It is going to hug this pyramid arc shape. Mein. So these come your arcuate branches. So this is your arcuate artery. And then finally, not even if you don't have a very good resolution machine, then you will then you don't have to blame yourself for not being able to see the interlobular arteries, which are very, very small, fine branches coming from the arcuates. Okay. So you will be found as a criminal if you're not looking at the segmental arteries and more uh, at the interlobar arteries. These two things you should be well versed with. You should be confident. Segmental and interlobar. Arcuate and interlobular depends on your expertise, depends on the resolution of the machine, depends on the patient's cooperation, all of those things. So what is uh, expected from us is the main renal artery, the segmental branches, one segmental artery for the upper pole, one for the middle pole, and one for the lower pole. And then just have a look at a few interlobar arteries. Arcuate and interlobular, baat ki baat hai. time milega to karenge, dedicated private center, mein, go for it. If you are working in a very high volume government setup, main renal artery, segmental, and interlobar, which is also called as the lobar. So main, segmental, lobar, and that's it. Take care. Uh, anterior and posterior divisions, we discussed again, right? Anterior division gives rise to four segmental arteries, while the posterior division gives rise to a single segmental artery. So this is one of the most important slide of this whole presentation. So keep this anatomy in your mind. Okay. Now a holistic view hai, that how the vessels are arranged. Always remember, right side pe is the IVC. Veins of the body are on the right side. The arteries are relatively towards the left. Okay. And always remember the vein is anterior. The renal vein is anterior. Artery is hiding behind that. 
both on the right side 